Endometriosis is a condition which involves endometrial tissue lying outside the uterine cavity. In endometriosis, the endometrial tissue is commonly located on the peritoneum, ovary, the pouch of Douglas, and the uterosacral ligaments. When endometrial tissue is implanted into the ovary, an endometrioma forms. Endometrial tissue responds to cyclical hormone changes and undergoes cyclical bleeding and local inflammatory reactions. Regular repeated episodes of bleeding and healing lead to fibrosis and adhesion formation. In extreme cases, a frozen pelvis results where extensive adhesions tether the pelvic organs and obliterate the normal pelvic anatomy. The etiology of endometriosis is unknown, although there are several theories. The retrograde menstruation theory postulates that retrograde menstrual regurgitation of viable endometrial tissue and glands along patent fallopian tubes leads to endometriosis. The Salomic metaplasia theory states that endometriosis originates from metaplasia of specialized cells that are present in the mesothelial lining of visceral and abdominal peritoneum. Vascular and lymphatic embolization has been demonstrated and explains endometriosis in sites outside the peritoneal cavity, such as the lung. It has been suggested that genetic and immunological factors may alter the susceptibility of a woman and allow her to develop endometriosis. Let's have a look at the clinical features of endometriosis in relation to the site of the lesion. Endometrial tissue at abnormal sites in the female reproductive tract, such as the ovary or fallopian tubes, leads to dysmenorrhea, which is painful menstruation, lower abdominal and pelvic pain, dyspareunia, which is pain during intercourse, rupture or torsion of an endometrioma, and infertility. Endometriosis involving the urinary tract leads to dysuria, which is painful urination, cyclical hematuria, and flank pain due to ureteric obstruction. Endometriosis affecting the gastrointestinal tract leads to dyskesia, which is painful defecation. It also leads to cyclical rectal bleeding and obstruction. Vascular or lymphatic dissemination of endometrial tissue to the lung can lead to cyclical hemoptysis and hemoneumothorax. The key indicators of endometriosis can be remembered by the four Ds, which include dysmenorrhea, dyspareunia, dysuria, and dyskesia. So what investigations or diagnostic tests can help diagnose endometriosis? Well, in addition to the baseline investigations, such as a full blood count, serum electrolytes, urea, and creatinine, an abdominal or transvaginal ultrasound can be useful for identifying rectal diseases or endometriosis involving the ovaries. An MRI can detect lesions greater than 5 mm in size, particularly in the deep tissues, such as the rectovaginal septum. Laparoscopy, which is the gold standard, allows lesions to be biopsied for histological confirmation and patency of fallopian tubes can also be checked. It is to be noted here that even if a doctor suspects endometriosis, it isn't necessary for the patient to undergo a laparoscopy to confirm the diagnosis, because the management will be the same regardless. However, if no symptomatic relief is obtained after three to six months of treatment, laparoscopy should be considered. The differential diagnosis of endometriosis can be classified as gynecological DDs and non-gynecological DDs. The gynecological differentials include leomyoma, which is a benign smooth muscle tumor of the uterus, adenomyosis, in which endometrial tissue grows into the myometrium, pelvic inflammatory disease, which is an infection of the female reproductive organs, or an ovarian cyst. Non-gynecological differentials include inflammatory bowel disease, irritable bowel syndrome, or interstitial cystitis. Endometriosis can be managed with medical and surgical treatment depending on the patient's age, symptoms, extent of disease, and her desire to have children. Let's take a look at the medical treatment options currently used for treating endometriosis. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs reduce the severity of dysmenorrhea and pelvic pain. However, their use is for symptom control only. 
It is advised to avoid additional use of codeine or opiates, as coexisting irritable bowel symptoms can be worsened, which eventually exacerbates the pelvic pain. Combined oral contraceptive pills should be considered in the absence of contraindications or the desire for pregnancy. COCPs reduce endometriosis associated dyspareunia, dysmenorrhea, and it provides cycle control and contraception. In case of risk factors for COCP use, progestogens should be used to induce amenorrhea. Long acting reversible contraceptives, depot medroxyprogesterone acetate, and levonorgestrel intrauterine system are useful. Gonadotrophin releasing hormone agonists are effective in relieving severity and symptoms of endometriosis. Long term use over six months is precluded because drug induced osteoporosis results. The type of surgical treatment provided to patients with endometriosis depends on whether the patient wants to have children or not. In case she does, fertility sparing surgery is preferred. Symptomatic endometriotic chocolate cysts should not just be drained, but the inner cyst lining should be excised to reduce the risk of recurrence. However, when drainage is performed as an adjunct to fertility treatment, drainage alone may be considered. Deposits of superficial peritoneal endometriosis can be easily ablated or excised during laparoscopy. Hysterectomy and oophorectomy should be considered only in patients who have completed their family and failed to respond to more conservative treatment. 